Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. Today's video voted on by our patrons is another question. What is the best cryptect from the Necron Codex? So for the video, we're going to be going through the non-named cryptect. So there's actually four in total, which is the Technomancer, the Psychomancer, the Chronomancer and the Plasmancer. All four have had their Planet 40k review done since the release of 9th edition, but now we'll be comparing them to each other and possibly reflecting on a few of the ratings as the meta has been changing throughout 9th edition. So all four are power level four, but they slightly differ in the points cost. So the Technomancer is 75 points at a base cost, the Psychomancer is 70, the Chronomancer is 80 points, and the Plasmancer is 70. So let's begin by putting up their stats first of all. Now all four have the same stat line except for the Chronomancer, who has a movement of eight inch instead of a movement of five inch. But other than that, pretty standard Necron character stats here. The attacks are very limited, but all four are on par with each other. All of them can fly except for the Technomancer, but it does have access to fly, which we'll go over in a moment. Then as for the other standard keywords, choosing a dynasty, being an infantry character, and a cryptic, etc. All four have the same ones. Also, all have got living metal, as well as command protocols. So as long as you've got a noble on the table at the start of the battle round, your cryptic is going to gain the buff from the command protocols due to being a character. They've all got the dynastic advisor's ability to prevent them from filling up the HQ slots. Again, you're going to require a noble to use that. So that's everything they've got in common within their data sheet. So everything from this point is unique to the unit. Starting off with the Technomancer. Now having the option for the Canoptic Cloak for 5 points, which gives him a movement of 10 inch, as well as the Fly keyword. So now he's got Fly like all of the other Cryptics do, and he also moves as quick as a Chronomancer as well. In addition, he can heal D3 wounds to any model within the same dynasty as himself, that is within 3 inches of him, which is a pretty huge ability. Now it's not exactly Apothecary huge by any stretch, but it's not limited to just core units and bikers. The only units he can't work with here are the Dynastic Agents and the Catan Shards. So if you didn't want the Cloak, you can take the Canoptic Control Node for 15 points as another option, which buffs the Canoptic units within 6 inches, which give them a plus 1 to hit which is also pretty big. Not many units in the book can actually buff Canoptic units, so it's a shame you can't take both upgrades as you'd want to keep up with the Wraiths and give them a plus one to hit. However, this does work really well with your Canoptic Spiders and your Canoptic Doomstalkers, which are sort of units that stay at the backfield, so the movement isn't really needed there. So quite a bit of versatility overall. His unique ability in the datasheet is Rites of Reanimation, which allows you to reanimate a model from a core unit, and if that unit is a warrior unit, then you're going to get D3 back instead of 1. So again, very versatile as he works with key units within the Codex, which are warriors, but can also help with other units that are core. It can also be used on the Canoptic units, Destroy units, and try out Praetorians as well. That's if you select the Phylactrine Hive from the Cryptek Arcana, which costs you 20 points. So that's the Technomancer specific Arcana. The other one that he's actually got access to is the Failsafe Overcharger, which is 30 points, which gives Canoptic units within 9 inches an additional attack in melee. And if they're a monster or a vehicle, it'll be D3 extra attacks. So really nice again for your Canoptic Spider units that have already got 5 attacks at strength 8. So it's now going to be 6 attacks at strength 8. Not bad at all. So overall for the Technomancer, big marks in terms of abilities. So where the Technomancer is more of a healing unit, the Psychomancer is more of a nerfing unit for your opponent's army. So one of his unique abilities is the Harbinger of Despair. Done in the morale phase and lasts you until your next morale phase, you select an enemy unit within 12 inches and you roll 3 dice. And if you beat their leadership, then you get to place a nerf upon the chosen target. The options you have are the following. So you've got either number one, the unit can't perform actions, and if they're already doing an action, they auto fail it. Number two, they lose objective secured. Number three, you half their advance and charge rolls. And number four, they cannot fire overwatch or set to defend, and also aren't eligible to fight in the fight phase until all other units in your army have done so. So all four can be really powerful. Now they are situational, but as you've got four to select from each turn, situations will arise. Now removing objective secured is probably the most commonly used nerf here as it can be really unexpected and really screw up your opponent's game plan. His other ability which is a nightmare shroud aura which is a minus one to enemy leadership values that are within six inches and it's also a minus one to combat attrition test as well. Now this will actually aid your first ability as you're throwing three dice to beat their leadership so if they've got a minus one modifier it makes it much easier. The Psychomancer's unique arcana is the Atav indicator which is used at the end of the movement phase you select an enemy unit within 18 inch that isn't a vehicle and you roll three dice. And if you match that unit's leadership or beat it, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. Now this costs 25 points. It's effectively smite for a cryptic. And again, it goes nicely with your nightmare shroud aura, giving a minus one to their leadership. 
On to the third cryptic, which is a Chronomancer. Now this cryptic messes with time and buffs your units up with the Chronometron mobility, which grants any dynasty unit within nine inches a five plus in one save, and then they also get to reroll their charge roll. So another huge ability, and remember this cryptic moves eight inches with the fly keyword, so he can keep up with those destroyers and be granting them an in one save and a reroll to charge, which is huge. It also works on the other units as well without an in one, such as Praetorians or Lich Guard with the war types. His second unique ability is actually a buff to himself because hey, why not? He gives himself the Time Splitter Mantle, which is a four plus in one save, so he can go hang out on the front line with the hard hitters and do reasonably well. His unique Cryptic Arcana is the Counter Temporal Nanomind, which is 30 points, done in the shooting phase. You select enemy model within 18 inches and half their advance and charge roll. A little bit like a Psychomancer. I'd say it was pretty pricey for 30 points, but it can be huge if used in the correct situation. Now imagine a unit of, say, Death Company stalking out one of your mid table units, throw this arcana on them and bang, they aren't likely to be getting in. Then when you put your chronometron buff on your nearby scorpet destroyers for the reroll charge and in one saves, adios death company. This is every turn as well, so some turns it won't be as great as others, but in the ones that it does work out, it'll be huge. The last cryptic here is the Plasmancer. Now when he was released in 9th edition, I really did like the model. Since then it's sort of taken a backseat as we've since had a lot more experience with using the codex in the edition and also the meta has been changing a fair amount due to codex releases. Now this is your more offensive cryptic. He's got Living Lightning which is a single d6 roll for an enemy unit within 6 inches and on a 4 plus they suffer a mortal wound. And that's an aura ability within 6 inches. He's also got the Harbinger of Destruction ability, so you, you throw three dice, and on a four plus, the closest enemy unit within 24 inches will suffer mortal wounds. So plenty of mortal wound spillage coming out from him. Pairing him up with the Katan Shard does cause quite a bit of mayhem. His unique Akara is the Quantum Orb for 20 points, which I think I've only ever used once. It's a once per battle item done in the command phase, and it's effectively a bomb you place within 24 inches. Then on your next command phase, any units within 6 inches of the orb, you're going to roll a dice for. And on a 4 or 5, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. And on a 6, it's a flat 3 mortal wounds. If it is a character unit, then it's a minus 1 to that roll. So realistically, no one's going to be taking damage from this. They're simply going to be moved away. It's more of a tactical weapon to force your opponent to use some movement which they don't want to do. Maybe due to having heavy weapons, or maybe they're on an objective or a key location, and your opponent needs to be on there. Now, it could do damage to some units that are trapped in combats, but even pylons can get you out to avoid the damage. Now, as it's a one-use only thing, I'd not take it unless I'm playing a fun narrative style game. So if I had to rank all four purely in terms of their abilities alone, I think the Technomancer tops the list, being the most versatile with the healing and buffing to all sorts of different units. Now the Chronomancer would be next for me with the Chronomancer ability. The Psychomancer would be inferred with the Harbinger of Despair. And then finally the Plasmanta. Moving into their weapon options, now the Cryptex are support characters, so expecting mass damage from them isn't the correct way to look at them. However, some of the weaponry isn't that bad. Now all the weapons that they have are both ranged and melee, but melee isn't really the place for them as they've only got one attack each, so keep them out of trouble. The Technomancer is the Staff of Light. It's the same staff that the Necron Overlord has access to. 18 inch, Assault 3, Strength 5, minus 2 AP and single damage. If you're lucky you might pick off a Maroon with it, but you're likely to score just one wound on your opponent's unit, that's fine. The Psychomancer has the Abyssal Lance, which is 18 inch range, Assault 3, Strength 4, minus 3 AP and single damage. So it's actually not as good as the Staff of Light. It does get a slight better amount of armor penetration, but it is only strength 4, so wounding with it is a little bit more difficult. The Chronomancer actually has a choice of two weapons, and he comes stocked with an extra melee weapon with Chronotem Drills, which actually gives him three extra attacks with that weapon and one single attack with his chosen lance. It's only strength 4 with no AP, so don't get your hopes up too high. So the two range options are either the Ion Staff, which is 18 inch range, Assault D3, strength 5, minus 2 AP and single damage, but it has the Blast keyword, and no in one saves can be made against it. So it's a bit of an oddball weapon, with only D3 shots, not 3 like the other ones. Maybe good against, say, Gene Stealers removing the in one and putting a minus 2 AP on them, giving them no saves. Now, the other option I do quite like, and it's a free upgrade as well, called the Entropic Lance. It's Assault 1, but it's Strength 8, minus 3 AP, and the damage is D3 plus 3. So for a support character, that's fantastic, and he doesn't even need to pay extra points for it. I'd always take this option, fire it at a vehicle each turn, with a chance of a potential 6 damage. The Plasma is next, which has the Plasmic Lance, 18 inch range, Assault D3, Strength 7, minus 3 AP and 2 damage. So D3 shots again, but it's got that decent stat line at Strength 7, minus 3 AP and 2 damage, meaning it's capable of taking out a couple of Space Marines on the board. Or you could fire it at a vehicle and maybe scrape off 4 wounds. 
Not bad at all. So I'm ranking the Cryptex purely based on their weapon loadouts. I'd put the Chronomancer in first place with that Strength 8 and Tropic Lance. The Plasmancer in second place, purely because of the damage 2 weapon. The Technomancer would be in third, as it's only got a Staff of Light, and then finally the Psychomancer. So tactically, what's the best way to use all four of these models? Now firstly, you want to spare 40 points and go get yourselves a pair of Cryptothrows. Now these little buckets are actually really good for their points. They don't take up a slot when you've got a Cryptek in the list, and if they're within 3 inches of your Cryptek model, then they prevent the Cryptek from being targeted by any ranged weaponry, which is superior to the Lookout Sir rule, because some weapons such as snipers can ignore the Lookout Sir rule. So Marines have got the Eliminators, and us Necron players have got Death Marks for example, there's lots of others. So Crypto Throws stop them from being sniped, so it's highly recommended that you use them. They also fight and shoot pretty well, around a Cryptek Model 2 with a stat boost if they're within 6 inches, so they're going to have 6 attacks each and hit on 3s. Also their pistols are pretty good too, 2 shots each with the strength 5 minus 2 AP for single damage, so it's only 40 points, where do I sign up? There is another way of avoiding being sniped, but it will cost you an Akana slot for your Cryptek, Prismatic Obfuscation, which is 20 points and prevents your Cryptek from being targeted unless it's the nearest enemy model. So this is not a lookout sir rule either. However, for only 20 points more, you get those two bucket bots that can also do some damage, so I'd pay it. So let's start off with the Technomancer and how to use him. Now this Cryptic model is so versatile that it can be used in multiple ways. Your options mainly revolve around the following. So either option one, give him the Canoptic Cloak and have him at your front line, healing the harder hitting units such as Destroyers, making use of the Rites of Reanimation ability, get yourself a Phylactery in Hive Arcana, bring in the Destroyer back as well, Works the same with Praetorians and Wraiths too. Option B, get the Canoptic Control Node and keep him in your back line with your Canoptic Doomstalkers and your Canoptic Spiders, giving them all a plus one to hit in both shooting and melee. So this makes the Doomstalker the best heavy support option in the Codex when he's hitting on threes with that Strength 10 Doomsday Blaster. And those Spiders are a great counter charge defense with a solid toughness 6, plenty of wounds and attacks along with their Strength 8 Claws. Having them hit on threes is also really nice. And if you keep spawning Scarabs alongside them too for an extra screen, it's going to work wonders. Again, you can also get the Phylactery in Hive to use it on a unit of Spiders to return a model once per game. Definitely worth it. Option C is having them with your core unit. So Warriors are the obvious main selection, but Immortals work here too, as you can bring a model back each turn, D3 if it's Warriors. Pair that with a Ghost Arc's Repair Barge to get two D3 back, and a Ghost Arc actually has a stratagem to make it D6. So lots of synergy there with restoring models. That's probably your cheapest way of having a Technomancer, as you don't really need any upgrades. You've also got access to the Voltaic Staff Relic, which is a direct upgrade to the Staff of Light which is a much improved weapon, it's Assault 4, Strength 6, minus 2 AP and the damage is 2, with the added bonus of 6s to hit, creating 2 additional hits. So definitely check that one out if you can. Now the Psychomancer, being a bit more situational, requires you to think on your feet. Having a game plan pre-game probably won't work with him, as he hugely depends on the mission and what secondaries you've got and whatnot. You need him to get within 12 inches of a unit that you want to debuff, which isn't always straightforward. So you could give him a piece of Arcana, which is the Dimensional Sanctum for 15 points, which effectively is Deep Strike. Then you can either use another unit that has the same ability, such as Flayed Ones, to provide him with a bit more protection and a Lookout Sir. Crypto Thralls unfortunately can't Deep Strike with him, so they won't be in your list, so get your 40 points back and spend 15 of them on getting Deep Strike. Fitting Destroyers are another option that can Deep Strike in, with their Tunneling Horrors ability, but they aren't quite as resilient, and once they're dead, your Psychomancer is next. So from the 4 debuff options that he has, turning off actions or objectives secured works pretty well, but you need to be contesting the same objectives for it to have any use if you're removing objectives secured. He does come with a big issue though, which is the use of his power is done in the morale phase. So turning off, say, Overwatch is actually pointless for that turn, so charging in from Deep Strike with your Flayed Ones, for example, you can potentially still be facing Overwatch. Another method of using him is keeping him back. With his Bodyguard Crypto Thralls and an enemy unit that looks to be making moves for the next turn charge, cut it short by halving their charge and advance rolls. Now you do need to be within 12 inches, but let's say that unit can move 6 inches in their turn, leaving a 5 inch charge to get within an inch away of your unit. Then if the charge is halved, they're actually going to need a 10 inch charge, which is likely to fail. Now the Chronomancer is next, he's got a bit more resiliency due to his inman save, 
and has the speed to keep up with your frontline units. So take some destroys for a walk with him and let him give that much needed inbound save and having the reroll to charge as well. I still try and take the cryptophiles with him. Maybe you'll need to advance them to keep them up for that added protection. And also remember he's got that entropic lance so he's doing work with that strength eight. Other units can work such as flayed ones and lich guard. Now wraiths already have a four plus in one save so it would be a touch wasteful to use on them but they would still thank you for that reroll to charge at the very least. Now your plasmancer is the last one here which is the most offensive cryptic here. He throws out mortal wounds left right and centre. I like the pair of a katan shard which is also throwing tons of mortal wounds. Now as this cryptic is the one you want up nice and close to the action, a bale of darkness relic may be a good option with them to bring along some lich guard or even a warrior blob with a shorter range strength 5 weapons to provide it with that much needed lookout sir and it's also a solid backup also if you're bringing that katan shard too it's a massive backup. So out of the four what is the best cryptic that we've mentioned today? Now starting off in fourth place I'd say the plasmancer is the least used from the four. Support characters need to be supporting the heavy hitters rather than actually doing the hitting themselves. Now it isn't a bad cryptic but in comparison it's the least valued. In third place I'd say it was the Psychomancer. Now he's got potential of literally winning you games but requires the right situation at the right time so planning is not straightforward and he doesn't have that much synergy within your codex. He's more of a nuisance to your opponent than a threat. Second place I'm going to give it to the Chronomancer. Now I really like the Chronomancer, his main ability is really useful but you do need to question the value of it. It's 80 points for the model just to get an inbound and reroll charges to a unit which is considerably pricey now. For 25 points more you can just get yourself 3 more Scorpic Destroyers. And don't forget that Strength 8 Entropic Lance as well which is doing quite a fair bit of damage. Then of course that leaves the last one which in my opinion is the best Cryptic in the book right now out of those four non-named cryptex, which is the Technomancer. His synergy with the codex is very valuable and very versatile. His healing is great. We know how good other factions healers are, such as the Plague Surgeon or an Apothecary. He's not quite that level by any stretch, but the fact that he's able to buff Canoptic units and repair any Dynasty unit, not just infantry and bikes. And he's also got that synergy with the best unit in the book, which is the Necron Warriors. So it makes him valuable. So for me, he's the number one here. Guys, in the comments below, rank your four cryptex in order that you think they'll come in and explain why. Drop a like to show that you support the channel. We really do appreciate the interaction. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.